back to Let's Go Geo. Today we will be talking about how to build your own mineral identification kit with some of the things that you see here. Now if you're an aspiring rock hound, you want to start collecting minerals and crystals, then you're going to need to know how to identify them and find them. And this kit will get you going. Okay, so the first thing that you definitely need is a mineral and rock field guide. This one's really nice. It's an Audubon field guide. Uh, it's small. You can bring it with you, but it's actually packed with tons of information about rocks and minerals. It has some really great colored pictures, so that's a plus. But what you really need are the pages that are about each mineral. If you need to identify minerals, you want to know things about them, and we'll talk about these items. But this, as you can see, lists things like the color, luster, hardness, crystal habits, and places where you can find them, and distinguishing features against other types of similar minerals. So you need that for all the different types of minerals, especially the ones that are difficult to identify or look like other minerals. So a mineral field guide is a must. So a key way to identify a mineral and distinguish it from another mineral is by establishing its relative hardness. Now the Mohs scale is a known way to establish a relative hardness. So if you have yourself a Mohs scale with you, you can either print one out, buy one, or just write it on a piece of paper like I have here. And then along with it, you will need Mohs scale tools to test hardness. And I will talk in another video about how you use a Mohs scale to test hardness. But for now, just know that you need to have, the uh, a reference would be nice to have on hand, as well as those Mohs hardness testing tools. And again, remember in the field guide, uh, you'll be able to see what the hardness of any specific mineral should be. So when you find your hardness by using these tools, then you can look it up in the book and see what you have. Along with that, it's really nice if you start to collect some mineral samples, like I have here. Uh, these will come in really handy for things like testing hardness, comparing minerals against one another, especially if you have something where you know absolutely what it is, so you can use it in the field uh, to compare against other minerals, as well as test for the hardness. Next, you want to have a magnifying hand lens. Now, this is great if you want to look at the minerals and figure out what their crystals look like, especially those really small crystals. Those can be hard to identify in the field, so a hand lens will really come in handy. So Another thing that you use to identify minerals is the mineral streak. And this is basically a streak, a powdered form of the mineral that you swipe across something called a streak plate. But this also works with a piece of unglazed porcelain as well if you need to make your own. But bring with you your streak plate that you can buy or your piece of porcelain tile if you have it. And you will basically scrape the mineral across it. And again, the field guide will tell you what, col what color you expect. Something that comes in handy actually is a bottle of water that you can use uh, to clean off the minerals if there's dirt on them. And you can also use a toothbrush. A toothbrush is great for cleaning off minerals that have dirt on them. If you just found them in the field, that dirt can get in the way of identifying. A toothbrush is a cheap, easy thing to have to help out with cleaning them. Now this bottle is also handy if you're working with carbonates and you need to test those. Then you can put some dilute acid in the bottle and use that in the field as well. Because when you have minerals that are carbonates, like this chunk of calcite here, sometimes it can look like minerals such as this one, which is actually a sulfate and therefore actually won't react to the acid. So that's a way to test those types of carbonate minerals. Now just a few other things that are nice to have on hand that you won't need for all minerals, but certain minerals for sure. A magnet comes in handy if you're trying to see if you have, say, a piece of magnetite. A UV light is useful if you are testing the fluorescent minerals, and then you might want to get yourself a UV light. Now I'd say it's also very important to have a few safety items, and that includes safety glasses, and a pair of gloves. Trust me, if you're breaking out minerals, then they might be flying up at your eyes and these are not that expensive. So certainly get a pair of safety glasses. And if you're an aspiring rock hound, surely you want to get yourself a rock hammer. 
You can get yourself a rock hammer from uh, rock shops or off Amazon. And it comes in handy when you're trying to break out minerals, rocks, and crystals. So you'll certainly want to get a good rock hammer. And once you start collecting those minerals, I highly recommend some sort of hard stock paper that you can put some labels on them to put locality information and other information that you've already done when you've identified the minerals. And if you need a way to store them, tackle boxes are one of the coolest ways to store your minerals. You can basically separate them out and have your labels in there. Tackle boxes have a great way to organize those mineral samples that you have along with those labels. So there you have it. With a kit like this, including that field guide and some of those tools that I talked about, you'll be on your way to identifying and collecting cool minerals, such as gypsum, calcite, feldspar, root tile, and quartz. And if you want to learn how to build and use a hardness test kit, check out some other videos here at Let's Go Geo. I'll actually demonstrate how you do this with real minerals from my collection. And I'll be talking a lot more about the details of how to test minerals and the specifics of minerals and showing you the minerals that I've found in the field as well. So stay tuned for that here at Let's Go Geo. I'll see you next time. Happy rock hounding.